today we're going to be tackling the control knob. Okay guys, now before we get started, I just wanted to explain briefly why the control knob fails and why you should change it to an aluminum part just like I've shown you here in the top left hand corner. Now if you actually take a look at the shaft on the right hand side, that's actually the OEM factory shaft. Now, and if you compare it just by looking at it, at the one on the left, you can see straight away plastic versus metal, aluminum versus plastic. So it doesn't take a genius to realize that they should have done this to begin with because over time plastic gets brittle and eventually it's going to break especially when they didn't design a shaft to go all the way through that black plastic uh, black plastic shaft so basically as you see when you when you use the, the scroller you actually use it quite heavily and you actually push it up down left right diagonal north south east west you know in every direction and you also press down on it so it actually needs to be quite sturdy in order to survive you know the lifetime of the car <clears throat> which is why I strongly recommend that you upgrade to this metal shaft that way you don't you can have that peace of mind and continue to drive your car without it one day failing on you and then you can't change your music or or whatever you know like you just want to have that peace of mind so that whenever you think your audio system isn't going to work in actual fact it's going to be fine because you've already upgraded the part to a metal shaft that way and I'm telling you now guys it will never fail ever again okay guys now to tackle the actual job of the control knob disassembling it and then we'll take it to the table and then I'll show you guys how to disassemble the actual control knob on the table bench so you guys can have a clear look of how I actually do it now first things first all you need is all you need for this part is three tools trim removal tool, tool a pick tool and your T20 screwdriver or in my case I'm using a power tool Okay, now we want to start with just the gear knob so we want to just pry it up here and we want to lift that up to give us room to uh, remove the gear knob and I'll show you how to remove that in just a second okay then okay so in order to remove the gear knob as you can see it simply secures on like that and then just comes off just like that guys set that aside now you want to remove you can actually use your hands but just to be safe I would use the uh, trim removal tool okay now to unplug these you don't want to just leave them plugged in you don't need to leave them plugged in and don't worry about them they only plug in one way so you don't have to worry about not knowing where to plug it back in set that to the side okay now we want to remove this piece in order to remove it what we want to do is just pull up so we just want to pull it up but we want to pull it from the thickest part so we don't break it there we go and that just comes off just like that okay guys and now we need to remove this part here in order to remove this we need to push it forward and then lift it up so we push it forward first and then we lift just like that and then it should just come out there we go Oh, don't forget about the screw, guys. Lefty loosey, righty tidy. There you go. Set that aside. Don't lose anything. And then that comes off. So, so you have to remove the screw here in order to remove this piece. So you guys, I'm not perfect. Even I still make mistakes. And then you've got another T20 torque speed right here as well guys so you want to just take that off lefty loosey righty tidy put set that to the side and now 
you can now it's free but in order to remove it we still need to disconnect this plug but now mine has already been rerouted as you can see it's very easy to remove but in order to remove this cable from the clip under here what you have to do is get underneath from the side compartment here pull back these carpets okay guys just to give like you guys so, a quick demo here, of how to remove my hand. this cable back, when it's routed back, in here and then you get access underneath you, all you got to do and that's is how you remove pull this carpet back yeah the, see this carpet right the, here the cable yeah all you got to pull this back instead of cutting it like that you don't want to cut this cable guys this is then the last thing you want to do you don't want to be cutting factory cables unless you absolutely all you got to do is pull this carpet back here and now and you will see so once you've got this very free, briefly um, going in under the that side cable cover, you should be able to see the just cable like that under guys and look so it now gives you the back, and then you simply pull the carp pull the carpet back one flap that way and the other and there you have it guys a little bit this way and you should that's how you get under there as you can see my finger that's why this pick tool is so good to use guys you got can you guys just barely see my finger here there it is right there different shape heads so it's moving it's there. To get to, uh, certain and things. that's how you get that out of there guys okay, now, you have to come from the side here now we need to remove this plug and tuck your finger now, in, in using a, a pick tool like i told you guys a pick tool and uh unclips you just have to get to the cable and, now that's and force it out from under the clip right here, that's guys. in there and then there you will goes. just and then with that I'm free it up and, and you'll be able to uh the control knob route it and out it's that easy guys it is that easy to remove the control knob and you simply reroute it follow it and that's it just like that guys it's that easy to remove the control knob just like that okay and now let's bring it to the table and let's take it apart Okay guys, now the first thing you're going to want to do is remove the top piece. Now in order to remove this, it's just held on by, it's just clipped in. So you need to get underneath here and with a little bit of pressure, you need to separate it from the, um, the control. And you work yourself around until it slowly loosens. And then just like that, it will come off. These are the parts that you're trying to loosen and they clip onto here. Okay, now the top part, this part is very easy. It just comes off. Just like this, guys. Just like that. Just a little bit of adhesive. And that sits on top like that. Just like that, it just sits on top. Right, and you push, put everything off to the side. And that's just another T10. This is the only screw that will be different, guys. As you can see, it's just a little bit different to the other ones. Okay. Now, there are 10 bolts that were in these holes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You just remove them with a 10 mil uh, Torx, uh, T10 Torx, sorry. And then you get here. You just take that just comes off like that and now we simply open it up this all comes off in one piece just pull straight up and that's exactly how it goes back together guys right there <clears throat> okay now as you can see for demonstration purposes i've already removed one of these so I'm, but i've put it back together just to show you guys how to remove it again Okay, now to remove this, it's just clipped in by these two hinges. As you can see right here, there's these two hinges. You just have to pop them out of its socket and then just take it out. Just like that. And you got to do them for all four. Now, for this, you'll see some clips where people pry it up because it's clipped in like this. But do not do that. Do not do that for the life of you. What you want to do is get in here. I don't know if you can see it properly, but there's actually the clip where it holds on to. So if you just hold it upside down a bit and just get a little pry tool in there and open it up, it will come straight off. Just like that, guys. Now, as you can see, what I did was 
I pulled this forward and then it just came straight off because that's what's clipping it in. As you can see, if you look inside there, there's a little clip that, that and that's what clips onto this part here. Okay, now you just put that aside. Okay, so you do that to all four of them. Now this one, if you look carefully here, that's how it's held in. So all you gotta do is separate it and then put, lift it up and it just comes out, just like that. There you go. Now be very gentle guys, you don't wanna break anything, okay? Now separate it again, like before, and just lift it up. Now you have two springs here you need to be careful of. One and two. There you go. Two springs. Be very careful, guys. You can't lose any of these because if you lose one, you can't put it back together. Okay, and then that's it for this whole area. Now we can simply lift the circuit board up. Be very careful, guys. I normally lift it just from the, the holes here. You can see these holes. You just lift it up. Give the cable some feed so you can lift it over here. Now, when you get to this part, you can simply unplug it here, but I just leave it on because it doesn't take long at all. Now, as you can see, this is how it works. As you can see, mine still works at the moment, but that's because I've already replaced it with the aluminium rod that I was telling you about. Now, here we go. Have a look at this, guys. Look at that rod compared to the old one that they used to have. Look at that. Look how sturdy this is, guys. That's never going to break ever again. So, you know, this is a problem that's going to fail no matter what. So if I were you, I'd probably get onto it now so that you don't have to ever worry about it breaking again. But look at this, guys. That's aluminium, sturdy steel. Okay, now for reassembly, it's very simple. As you can see, that just sat over the top there, but okay, now it has to sit over that so you can uh, uh, clip onto this part here. So this shaft actually sits in here and then it sits over the top like this. And then when you're putting this part back together, you want to test it and just make sure it still works. Just like that. Okay. Now for reassembly. Very simple, guys. Here we go. Chip goes back on first. Obviously, after you've removed the, the, the rod and replaced it with the aftermarket uh, part that I just replaced mine with as well. Okay. And now... Get the chip flat in there like that. Yep. Okay. Now to reassemble it. Okay, so what you're going to want to do is start off with these. And you can actually put these back in already. You don't have to put it in after. I find it's easy if you just assemble it all together now. So just get the whole... Uh, the the little uh, levers into the hole and just like that because that's how it has to work in order to function and then this sits just on top like that and as you can see it just clips down like this guys look just like that and it's in just like that guys and these only go one way if you have a look carefully see this part here that's where this sits so you want to make sure you install it the correct way. Oh, don't forget guys, see? The springs. And then just push down on top and just clips in place guys. And the other spring. Just get it over the top there. And that's where this, this protruding part here uh, is meant to go so you just press down again and that's it guys look at that then you simply do the same with the rest <clears throat> you 
you simply do the same with the rest and install this back on if you pull this apart and uh, you don't know how it goes let me show you it goes like that first and then this goes down and then that one and then that that's it perfect and then you simply put the case back on Scroll knob back on, test it, make sure it all works, make sure it, it can go all ways and it's uh, pressing down. You get the uh, screw that's a bit different, put that in there, T10 remember. There you go. Then. That sits in here. Okay, you just want to get that flush. Yep, there we go. And you want to make sure these four tabs sit in the grooves. Yep. There we go, perfect center. And now, just like we did before, make sure these levers here line up with these tabs. If they don't line up, it will not sit on perfectly. There you go, see? When you get it lined up properly, and then it just clips into place. Just like that, guys. Then you simply put the screws back in, all, all 10 of them, and you're done. Just like that, guys. It's that simple. I'm not going to put it in because I, I didn't put in the other parts. I just wanted to rush through this clip for you guys. And, and there you have it, guys. It's that simple. So go out on eBay. Buy yourself a rod now. It's probably... Um, I got mine for $45, but I, I've seen them now for $30, $35 even. And from Australia. So if you're from America, you can buy it from China or from... Amer I'm sure someone in America has already started stocking them. And uh, yeah, replace it now with a metal rod. Don't, don't try to fix it like this and then expect it to last again over time the wear and tear of you moving it around and the heat that it gets eventually is just going to snap it again so there's no point guys i'm um, just trust me on this it will fail again with without a doubt it will fail again because it's plastic you know i don't know why they designed it that way but that's why this is also one of the major faults in a W204. They decided to put a plastic part when they should have just went aluminium to begin with. And then you'd never have this problem, guys. But there you have it. Now, now all we gotta do is reinstall it back into the car. So let's do that, guys. Okay, guys, now that it's all back together, before we wanna start reinstalling it, you wanna make sure everything works. So give it a swig you know try it out make sure it feels like it did before you know it still clicks and it still uh, executes okay then the first thing we want to do is route the cable now as you can see i've already started routing the cable you got to go through the hole here and then your cable comes up through the side like so And then you just route the cable how you want it. You don't have to tuck it back into the clip area anymore. That way, this that way it's easy now for the next time when you want to remove it. There we go. And then that plug there, that clips from the bottom. So you got to right, you got to lift it up in order to clip it back in place. And now because that cl clips upwards and this plug plugs downwards, you got to line the plug up and then hold it with your tool and press down so it clips into place like so there you go careful not to uh, uh, stuff up the cables careful not to uh, accidentally uh, rip the cables with your pick tool just be very gentle guys 
Okay, now that we have that back in, we want to line the um, control knob so that it sits in. Now, you have to make sure that this part of the of the uh, control knob slides underneath here into place so we can put the torque screw back in. You do that by going in on an angle like so, and then just drop it in place. Now, you grab your two T20 Torx bits, Torx screws, and you put them back. You just put the one first, like so, and then you get your screwdriver, or in my case, I'm using a power tool, yeah. but like I said, you don't have to use a power tool if you're uncomfortable. And just like that, it goes bang. It's back in its place. Okay. Oh, so I just hit that with my head. <laughs> okay, now to plug this back in, and then like I said before, guys, it only goes in one way, so you don't have to be worried about it. As you can see, you can't get it wrong, you know? You can only go in one way, guys. There you go. See? Blue on top, white on the bottom. Okay, now before that, we have to install this piece so that we can put the screw back in, guys. So this, with this piece, you've got to slide these clips in first so that it, it will go in and it slides in back here. You just have to do it like that, like so. Make sure it's lined up. And then push back, get it in, and clip down. Just like that. There you go. Yep. There you have it, and then you just put this screw back in. Use your screwdriver again, or your power tool, whichever one you feel comfortable with. Remember, when you're using a power tool, you want to do it slowly, so you don't end up scratching anything or ruining anything, or especially, you don't want to rip anything. Once you've got that screw back in, your cup can go back on. Now. In order to get this piece back on, what you got to do here, guys, get it over this one. Like so. Now, all we got to do is push it in at the back. You want to get the bottom slid in first. And once it's lined up with all the sides, you just press down and then clip back into place. Like so. Just like that, guys. Perfect. Then, You've got your gear knob. Remember, guys. That loosens it. And then you got to sit that one on first. Then you put your knob back on. Like so. Just push it all the way down. Turn it to the left to tighten. That's it. And it's in. And we simply line this up. Guys. And push down and that's in then we simply have to pull this back a bit so it can fit again push the top in first and there you go perfect guys done control knob swapped out for an aluminum part so you never have to worry about it failing ever again guys there you go there you have it guys perfect and that wasn't hard at all. So even though this is a major fault with the W204s, as you can see, it's not that big of a problem to tackle yourself. Now, if you were to take that to a shop and um, and got somebody to do that for you, I guarantee you it, was, it would set you back in Australia at least a few hundred, maybe even up to like $500, depending on the person you go to, whether it's the dealership or just a normal indie car, car mechanic. Um, car mechanic and there you go guys nothing to it there you go absolutely perfect perfect guys perfect I'm just doing a little bit cleaning here but there you go guys one of the major faults in a W204 and we handled it with no problems at all 
Well, there you have it, guys. How to remove the control knob without cutting the factory cable, disassembling it, and reinstalling it back in the car. So, if you like that video, guys, please like and subscribe. Hit that notifications bell so you'll be notified every time I release another video. And check out my other social media content Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr. So until next time guys, this is Mike with Mikey's Vlogs, signing off. Thank you.